in this video, revealing the best passive income investments for complete beginners and how complete beginners earning $100 a day to $700 a day in pure passive income with no experience. More at that after the intro. Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vasile here. Welcome to this video. Before we actually begin, I remind you that some of the spots have opened up for this week's free workshop, where it's the fastest and easiest way to make money online. Sign up for it in the link below. We literally have a 62 year old grandmother go from zero to $160,000 profit in 90 days, so check it out now. So one of my earliest memories as a child was I remember seeing like my mom and dad constantly fighting over money and working like eight, 10, 12, 16 hours a day just to ever make ends meet. And it made me got stuck in this paradigm of, oh, in order for me to, for example, make money, I have to, for example, work hard and spend more time and, and, and literally waste more of my precious life away for a job and a boss that doesn't actually like respect or value me as a person. And of course, as I got older, I was like, is this actually the answer? So I started reading books like Think and Grow Rich and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I started realizing that there's this concept known as passive income, where essentially I can get paid while I'm eating, while I'm sleeping, while I'm pooping, without actually having to be in a cubicle. And let me tell you, I got addicted. Addicted to the point where I, I needed to figure out how I could separate my time for money, right? And ever since then, you know, we failed a lot, but we, some started really succeeding. Like one went from zero to $8,000 in 30 days. One went from zero to six grand in 30 days, so 1.6 million that first year. And one now makes 35 grand to 46 grand a month, right? And because of that, my entire life changed and I started interviewing all these successful people online that also started creating passive income. And what I wanted to do was just share like all these things that I ended up sharing from all of their passive income investments compared to what you would typically, for example, read on Google, right? Like if I literally Googled best passive income, uh, for example, uh, investments, you literally see this thing from the financial samurai come up and they just talk about, you know, like the mainstream advice of passive income, right? But I wanna compare that to, for example, what people kind of like in the trenches that are living in places like Thailand, Bali, and traveling around the world and making the passive income are actually doing. So the first thing that they talk about is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Now, peer-to-peer -peer lending is the least best passive income is P2P lending. And essentially what it is, is you literally, for example, like say you have 10 grand, right? You literally give 10 grand to someone else and they will literally take your 10 grand, they'll spend it on some type of business and in a given amount of time, they'll pay you 10 grand plus maybe an extra 7% on top of that, right? So an extra 7% of 10 grand, what is that? About like $700 for your 10 grand. So you can see this, look, your annual return can be five to 7%. Right? So if you really think about it, the biggest problem with P2P lending is people not paying investors back. So that's what it could be completely risky. Now, you know, I literally have some friends, for example, here in Bali that make a bunch of money online, for example, in coaching, and then they throw it all into peer to peer lending. Now, I, I do think, like, for me, I don't put any money in peer to peer lending because I think, for example, it's very, very risky. And you could literally loan money out that you've made to someone and they might not be able to pay you back. I think that's just like way too risky. That's why I don't personally do it, uh, but you can see why that's like the least best passive income investment. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what I do for the best passive income gains that I've seen that I've invested in, right? Uh, the seventh thing they talk about is private equity investing, which is investing directly in a company. Now I've tried this in the past and I'm telling you this right now, uh, even though this is a great way to make passive income because you're like, oh, you know, another company is gonna do the hard work. Uh, the, the company and the, the team, they're gonna go build it and stuff like that, but most companies do not succeed after 10 years. And if you put all of your money in that basket and that does really well but then ends up failing, how can you retire if that business does not exist? It's also another reason why, for example, investing in individual stocks is so risky because, for example, say I put like a bunch of money in, for example, like an AT&T, right? Yeah, that, that's great. You can retire, like for example, my uncle who literally put all of his money in AT&T and you know, gets a healthy dividend out of it, right? But that's assuming that that company will be around when you're of the retirement age, right? But what if you, for example, put all of your money in, for example, a Kodak, right? Or a Blockbuster, which was huge companies, but then ended up going bankrupt. If all your money was in that, you would have ended up losing a lot. So even though passive income, when you invest in a company is great, if it succeeds, most of the time it fails. That's why, for example, when I invested directly in private companies, I failed all the time. Like, I don't think I've had one 
private company investment that actually succeeded just because the marketplace is brutal, right? The sixth thing they talk about is a CD or certificate of deposit. So there was a time when CDs or money market accounts would produce a respectable 4% yield. Nowadays, you'd be lucky to find a five to seven year CD that provides anything above 1.5%. And essentially what it is, is you literally give money to a bank or a government institution where they're essentially saying, okay, you can't touch this for five to seven years, but we'll pay you money on your interest. But you can see it's not really that great because if you think about this, look at this, to make $10,000 a year in passive income, you would need about $2.5 million in capital. So you could see that even though it could be a lot safer, like there, there are better options in my case. Another one they talk about, for example, is physical real estate, which makes sense, right? A lot of people love this as their favorite, for example, passive income uh, vehicle. Essentially what it is, is they're like, okay, let me go get a mortgage, let me go get a house, right? Now they have a house, they just literally get someone to go ahead and live in that house, and that person will literally pay off the mortgage. So even though they're quote in debt, right? They're in good debt because say their mortgage is $1,500 a month and they're paying the bank every single month, $1,500 a month. Well, if they find a tenant to go and live in there for two grand a month, they're cash flowing $500 a month, even though, you know, they're in debt because the tenant is literally paying back the bank for them. So even though they're cash flowing $500 a month, they're building equity of owning the house. Then after 10 to 20 years of renting it out, you actually own the house upright. So not only do you own like, for example, this 200 or $300,000 house that literally the tenants have paid off, but you also cash flowed $500 a month in the meantime. So you can see exactly uh, why people enjoy doing that. My dad tried doing a lot of that earlier on, um, but like, you know, it can be pretty complicated and it can be risky, especially if you do a lot of leverage, right? And you know, for example, I interviewed a lot of people on my podcast, like for example, one of the people that are in our community that made like a good amount of money in like one of our podcasts, he had like a nine figure real estate business that completely crashed in the 2008 crisis, right? So the craziest thing is you can make a lot of money, but because sometimes you can be over leveraged by borrowing too much money from the bank, you could actually lose it all and get wiped out, which could be again, pretty risky, right? Now, the fourth thing that they talk about is creating your own products. Now, this is something that I really enjoy myself because number one, I don't like, like for example, you don't have to necessarily create the products yourself. You could just find other people who've created them for you and you could just sell that. Like that's literally what I did here, right? Um, I didn't have my own product. I literally just sold someone else's. They did the shipping, they did the handling, they did the customer service. And instead of investing money in a company, I invested my own time, right? In creating systems that could allow myself to attract sales. But guess what? If I got a sale, someone else would do the shipping, the handling, the customer service. They'll do all of that. And that's essentially what you know we teach, right? We're like, okay, well, if you wanna make passive income, but you don't have a lot of money, and you don't have that much time and you wanna find a way to automate it and get other people to do the hard work, you don't wanna invest private equity into a company because that company might fail and you could have an endless amount of products you could go ahead and promote. I mean, that's essentially how, you know, for example, someone like Dina went from zero to 30 grand a month in like a couple of weeks at age 47 because she could just tap into an existing resource. Or for example, Ilya, who made 100 grand in two months with this system, or for example, Greg, who made 30 grand a month within several weeks at 58 years old. So you could see when it comes to leverage, you know, most people when it comes to making passive income, they're like, oh, to make passive income, I just gotta, for example, take how much I spend. So if you literally say, for example, $2,000 a month is what I spend, multiply well, by 12, 24 grand a year I would spend, divide that by 0.04%, which is a safe withdrawal rate, I would just need 600 grand in an investment where then, you know, I can make that passive income. But the problem with most people is they don't have 600 grand. They don't, right? So what people are starting to do is they're like creating leverage for themselves and they're like, okay, well, if I don't have 600 grand, what if I could tap into, for example, a company that have the 600 grand, that take that money and they invest in their own products, their own services, their own fulfillment, and instead I could just take a little bit of my time, a little bit of my money and leverage that, but without having the risk of, for example, real estate or you know investing in a private equity like business, right? And like I said, that's exactly what all of these people ended up doing on my podcast. 
and it ended up succeeding, which is why literally, if you want to go check this out, literally check out my uh, main channel and just check out these podcasts because a lot of these people are normal ordinary people just like you that are actually killing it for themselves. But the coolest thing is they don't actually do their own product. The next thing is fixed income and bonds. So essentially it's kind of like similar to CDs where essentially you literally park your money into this investment vehicle and they throw off some type of interest. The only downside is now it's very, very small, 1.3%. So now like if inflation, which is you know the value of the dollar decreasing as time grows, right? Like you're barely beating inflation, right? So that's why even though it could be safe, it could also be unsafe because at the end of the year or at the end of 20 years, you know, it doesn't really do anything for you because inflation is at three or 4%, right? Uh, the second thing that they talk about is, uh, for example, real estate crowdsourcing. So this is like, for example, CrowdStreet and Fundrise or like doing things like, for example, a REIT, right? Where essentially you don't actually invest in the property yourself, but you invest in other people who invest that money for you, right? Now, of course, that could be also pretty risky, um, especially if you're not an accredited investor and you have no idea what you're doing. Remember, investment is literally thinking in 10 to 20, 20 to 30 year increments, not just like, oh, how can I make a bunch of money this year, right? And then the last thing they talk about is, for example, dividend investing, which my uncle literally made all his retirement passive income with this. I mean, he also kind of like got lucky, like when he was like in his 20s, every single money that he made from his savings and his paycheck, he would throw it into AT&T stock. Right to the point where you know he got it to the point where he could literally live off of the dividends, and sometimes it doesn't have to be millions, right? Like if you literally have like six hundred grand in like a good dividend-paying stock, and you literally live off four percent of that, right? You can literally get twenty-four grand a year for the rest of your life. Now it doesn't sound a lot, but heck, when you literally live in Asia, like where I do, and a lot of these people that I interview on my podcast, like this eleven-year-old girl that turned on thirty million dollars, or this guy that makes a million dollars per month profit all of which live in Asia and make passive income online, it, like it's not that crazy amount of cost of living, right? So this is what the traditional ways of people making you know, passive income would, would share, right? And, and if you were literally going to school, college, or you're surrounded by people that have never made passive income online, these are probably all the ways that you are think are the only option because this is what people will literally talk about. But what if, what if there are easier ways? Right, and what I see the best passive income opportunity, especially for beginners, is digital real estate. Now you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is digital real estate? Well, if you really think about it, let's actually break down that real estate business, right? What is that real estate business in terms of passive income? We talked about it before. You literally get a bank, you borrow money from the bank, you get a house, right? Now you get this house, you pay $1,500 a month in the mortgage. Then you get someone else to come in there, live in there, and pay you two grand a month. So you essentially created this space and now you got someone else to live in it and you got cash with 500 bucks. Well, did you know the exact same thing is going on right now before our eyes on the internet? Right now what I'm doing is I'm creating digital real estate in the form of content, either videos or for example, uh, blog articles, right? And you can see we literally are heavily investing in our blog, right? And the reason why is because there's so much people going after this digital real estate because it's very cheap, if not free, to go ahead and create. Like, look at this. Crane and Go, they literally made 86 grand last month. Uh, this girl who literally lives out in an RV made 100 grand the previous month. This, these people, nor do I, they just recommend credit cards, right? But they literally make $100 million a year in passive income because they don't actually own their own products. Someone else does the shipping and handling. And you're probably wondering, what the heck are they doing? Number one, they're developing digital real estate. Well, when, when in this case, it's literally content. Literally YouTube videos or blog articles or uh, Pinterest like pins and whatnot. People are ranking for these things because same way how there's a lot of traffic in front of a dentist office or a McDonald's. The more traffic means the more eyeballs go into this McDonald's which will make them more money. It's the exact same thing with people searching things online. On YouTube, on Google, on Pinterest. And these people searching are literally eyeballs to want to buy something. So a huge passive income business, which you can see me break down right here, which is actually this business right here, is me creating content and renting that out to advertisers where then they pay me 35 grand or 46 grand a month, right? And you can see that is why we've literally positioned it there because think about it. For most passive income vehicles, you need 400, 500, 600 grand, a million, two million, three million, four million dollars to go ahead and get a return. But what if you created content that's literally dirt cheap to create? Like, I mean, you can make a video about it or you could write a blog article, which is what these people do. They just literally write on their blog 
that literally cost them, like for example, a couple dollars a month to go ahead and create. And now they're developing online digital real estate, literally that will survive for the next decades. Now this is where I feel are, is the biggest opportunity for passive income for complete beginners because number one, you don't need to invest that much money and most of it, it's really just a lot of your time. Now of course this is in financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is really what a lot of people in our community are doing. These are what you know, the Dinas, the Ilios, the Gregs that are going from zero to 30 grand a month are doing. And if you need help with that and you want a faster and easy way to create this, and make sure you sign up for this week's free workshop below because it's the fast and easiest way to take advantage of this new opportunity. As well as check out all these podcasts in the link below right here, right here. But hopefully subs. Love you guys. See you guys later. Woo!